It's kind of like the children of Israel. He brought them through the Red Sea, and then all of a sudden, is God real? We don't have anything to eat. Come on, Pastor. Is God real? Uh -huh. We don't have anything to drink. Now, this is the same God that just brought you through the Red Sea. Yes. yes. Now you're wondering, is he real? Come on, Pastor. Just because you got to figure out the next thing. Uh -huh. It's all about you don't know what's coming next. Let's make a declaration over the word today. Somebody say this with me. My faith is in the word. My faith is in the word. I can have what it says I can have. I can have what it says I can have. And I can be what it says I can be. And I can be what it says I can be. If you really believe that, shout amen for yourself. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If I step on your shoes today, just know that I've got big spiritual feet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to invite your prayerful attention to the 19th chapter of the gospel of St. Luke. We're going to be landing on verses 33 and 34. I'll be reading out of multiple versions of the Bible so that we can get some spiritual clarity. Amen. Amen. The Amplified says it like this in Luke chapter 19, 33 and 34. As they were untying the coat, its owners asked them, why are you untying the coat? They said, the Lord needs it. Yeah. Our faith is shaped uh -huh. and it's molded. Because of something you heard, because of something you have experienced, yeah. or something that you have seen. And now you might have faith, but there's so many people out there who go, I don't know what's coming next. Yes. I'm not sure if God is really real. Uh-huh. It's kind of like the children of Israel. He brought them through the Red Sea, and then all of a sudden, is God real? We don't have anything to eat. Come on, Pastor. Is God real? Uh -huh. We don't have anything to drink. Now, this is the same God that just brought you through the Red Sea. Yes. yes. Now you're wondering, is he real? Come on, Pastor. Just because you got to figure out the next thing. Uh -huh. It's all about you don't know what's coming next. Come on, Pastor. In the Old Testament, we read about the children of Israel. Uh -huh. How Pharaoh was just chasing after them. Yeah. He brought all of his soldiers. Uh -huh. He brought so many hundreds, like 500 or something, uh -huh. chosen chariots. Come on, Pastor. First of all, who got 500 chosen chariots? <laughs> who got 500 chariots? Period. <laughs> he, chose, he chose 500 out of, he chose his best. And then, you know, they use horses uh -huh. for war. Come on, Pastor. This man was in war mode chasing children of Israel. My God. Come on, come on. Mm. This is good, Pastor. But that same God that opened up the sea so that the children of Israel could go across. Uh-huh. And allowed them to cross on dry land. Uh-huh. Waited until Pharaoh and his whole army come on, come on. got positioned mm -hmm. in a place to take them down. Jesus. And he took that same water that was standing up on his sides mm. and allowed it to fall My God. on Pharaoh. Ooh. And drown him, drown his army, uh -huh. drown his war horses, uh -huh. and drown all of his chariots. Yeah. Even though the chariots didn't need air, they got swallowed up by the water. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Now, while all of this sounds encouraging, we want to know why. Uh -huh. Because oh, anytime you get into a storm yeah. or a touchy situation, uh -huh. because you know God, Come on, God can bring you out on the other side. Uh -huh. But he'll drown those Jesus. in your situation Jesus. who don't know him. Come because on. deep waters have an adverse effect on yeah. our enemies. Uh -huh. Well, make it plain. <laughs> Jesus. Tough times uh -huh. have an adverse effect on our enemies. Yes. When we know the Lord. Uh -huh. When we love the Lord. When we walk with righteousness yes. in our lives. Come on, Pastor. I said it. Tough times, tough times have an adverse effect yes. on our enemies. Come on, come on. Even if they plotted against yes. you, my God. Even if they set it up against you, my God. God will cause you yes. to walk out, uh huh, and not even be wet. Come on, Pastor. If it's a fire, God will cause you to walk out, walk out, 
and not even smell like smoke. Come on. That's God. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. That's the kind of a God that we serve. Yes, Lord. What do Hallelujah. you do Hallelujah. when God yes. has yes. need Woo. of you? Come on, Pastor. That's good. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Instead of shouting about that, some uh -huh. people find themselves in what Thank I call you, a quagmire. Uh-huh. And they have to deal with that one question that every human being has to deal with at least once in your life. Yeah. Lord, uh -huh. why did you choose me? Uh huh. Come on, Pastor. For this. The only people who don't have to deal with this question are people who have ignored the call of God on their life. We have a problem with this question because. Each and every last one of us knows just about everything there is to know about ourselves. We know our failures. We know our flaws. Yes. yes we know our shortcomings. Yes. Yes. We know our own personal hangups. Yes. We know what drives us up the wall. Uh huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know what drives us crazy. We know why sometimes we feel like a nut, mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't. Come on, Pastor. So now we're wondering, Lord. Whoa. Why did you call me? My God, my God. For this. Because the word says many are of the call. Uh-huh. But only a few. Few are chosen. Are chosen. That's word, Pastor. That's word. Yes. Let yes. me say it another way. Uh-huh. Clowns are the superstars. Uh-huh. But they still don't run the circus. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now here's the translation for my clown statement. Hearing the call of God is just half of the battle. Uh huh. Whereas positioning yourself to answer the call is an all, a, another thing altogether. All right. Why? Because as you're going to see from the next image I put on the screen, at some point you have to be, you know, responsible enough and seasoned enough and mature enough in God. To die to yourself. That's good, Pastor. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. At some point, you got to die to yourself. Yes. And, and 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 like the Bible says, you you eventually will have to pick up your own cross. Uh huh. In other words, the stuff that you tarry with, uh huh. You'll have to pick it up and work with it. Come on, Pastor. You'll have to take. It's like taking off one face. Uh huh. And putting on another. All right. Uh oh. Oh, make it plain, Pastor. Mm -hmm. You'll have to take off one face. Yes. You got to take off the face that says, I'm okay. You got to take off the face that says, I'm Gucci. Come on, Pastor. And you'll have to put on a face uh -huh. of humbleness. Humbleness. That's you'll it. have to put on a face of righteousness. Righteousness. When you go into a place of total submission. Yeah. When you go into a place where you say, Lord, not my will. Come on, Pastor. But thy will. Yeah. Be done. Uh-huh. You got to go to that place. Come on, Pastor. That's that's what most people call the secret place. Uh-huh. That, that's a place you might not be able to tell anybody about yet. Come on, Pastor. Because you're still walking it out, walking it out, and walking it out. That yeah. place where you have to die to yourself. Come on, Pastor. That place that kills off pride. Uh -huh. That place that kills yes, off arrogance. Uh, that place that kills off all of this self-confidence yes, and this overconfidence. Yes. When you think you can do it on your own Ooh. without the Lord. Come on, Pastor. That's the place I'm talking about yes, this morning. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We must you, die Jesus. to ourselves before we can live for God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clowns are impervious to order instruction because they want to be the center of attention. Uh-huh. They are impermeable to protocol uh -huh. because they desire to be the main featured attraction. Come on, Pastor. They are invulnerable to the law mm, and instruction. Why? Because they want to bring lawlessness and confusion in the form of what I call you, comical diversions. Uh -huh. come on, they Pastor. think they're supposed to come in and spice it up. Well, sometimes they should just come in and, as, as Big Mom would say, sit down somewhere. 
<laughs> get somewhere and sat down. Get somewhere and sat down. I don't know what sat down is, but that's what <laughs> that's what she used to say. Get somewhere and sat down. Sit down. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Sit your spirit down. That's what you're saying. Come on. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me say it another way. We hear the call of the Lord uh -huh. to do something for the kingdom of God. We hear it. And then we begin to wrestle with ourselves. Uh -huh. That's why that question came up. Why did you choose me uh -huh. for this? Come on, Pastor. Why? Because our spiritual lives are not as pristine as we want everybody to think. Right. We can look in the mirror and know we're not everything we wish we were. That's right. So true. We so pray, true. but we don't always pray the way that we should. Come on, Pastor. We Come praise. On. Come on. But we don't always praise Ooh. the way that we should. Help us, Lord. That's right. We fast. Yeah. And we don't always fast the right way. And while we may attempt to be holy uh -huh. and as sanctimonious as we possibly can to become the very best version of ourselves, uh -huh. if we be honest, uh -huh. we might not say it out loud, uh -huh. we might not write it down, nobody may not know about it, Come on, Pastor. but in some way, shape, form, or fashion, we uh -huh. go to God. Yes. And we say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I'm not sure if I'm ready to do this work. To be utilized and used for the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. I'm not sure, bro. I mean, can we be real? Yes. Nobody just jumps on the bandwagon to do something for the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Not all the time. Because sometimes we jump on there and we limp back. Uh -huh. Other times, we don't just jump. We sit there and try to figure out a way around God's call. Yeah. That's why it says many are up the call. Uh-huh. But only a few are cho chosen. Uh -huh. Why is it only a few chosen? Because when you hear the call, at some point, it's like a telephone. Uh -huh. You're either going to pick it up yeah. or you're going to ignore it. Come on, Pastor. This, this passage of scripture that we see with the donkey today is encapsulated with what I call childlike obedience. Yes. Because that's what you got to have for God. Uh -huh. And just as that coat, the ass, uh -huh. The donkey, uh -huh. as it were, uh -huh. was 100% obedient to being used from the call of God on his life. Likewise, we see leading up to Easter, Jesus my God, being obedient uh -huh. to the call to become our redeemer. Come on, yes, yes. Likewise, yes. we see Jesus, Jesus saying yes to God. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. He rode into Jerusalem. Uh huh. On the back of an ass upon which no man had ever sat before. Come on. And this was a crucial time because it was the feast of the Passover. All right, all right. A time when the children of Israel were being emancipated from Egyptian slavery and bondage of captivity. All right. And this is what's crucial about these moments on today's scripture. Uh-huh. All the time that Jesus was on earth. He never allowed anybody to address him or really kind of accept him as the quote unquote Messiah. Right. He never, he never, he never really allowed that. Uh -huh. But here, when he rides in, this is the first time he allows people to call him the Messiah. My God. The King of the Jews. Yeah. The Savior of the whole world. Uh -huh. And this is the first time he allowed people to address him as such. Come on, Pastor. Somebody say, put some word on it. Put some word on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> In Zechariah chapter number nine, verse number nine, there was a prophecy spoken over Palm Sunday during the time of the Passover. Come on, Pastor. And we know for sure that if it was spoken before and it comes to pass, uh -huh. you can count on it to be true. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking about dying to self. Uh -huh. Zechariah 9 and 9 in the Amplified says, Behold, your king, messianic king, is coming to you. He is righteous and endowed with salvation, humble and unassuming in submission to the will of the Father. That's the place. In submission to the will of the Father. That's the place we want. Uh -huh. And riding on a donkey, up on a coat, the foal of a donkey. That means a young donkey. He didn't choose a horse because horses were basically used for war. He chose a donkey because a donkey at that time 
represented peace. They were pretty docile types of animals. They were even sometimes used as pets. They were just common animals and were qu quite known to be stubborn. Uh huh. That's why you hear people saying from time to time, that person is stubborn as in, whoop, you know what I mean. <laughs> they were nicknamed an ass. They were blue collar worker animals. Uh huh. He chose a donkey from a small town called Bethage. A donkey that was tied up in an inconspicuous place on the back side of nowhere where two small little towns met. One donkey that had never ever been used before. It says it has never been set up on by another man. Come on, Pastor. An animal that often gets overlooked. Mm. I want somebody to catch this. And just like Jesus had need of this donkey, uh -huh. he has need of me yes. and you. you. Yes. Isn't it amazing how God seems to choose the most least likely of people to do a job for him? Uh -huh. Kind of like you and me. Amen. Amen. Hint, hint, he might choose you to do something that you weren't expecting to do. What do you do when God has need of you? Come on, Pastor. In today's text, as I said before, he wants us to be released, yeah. reclaimed, and given a chance to recover. Uh -huh. First of all, we must be released. Yes. Jesus gave specific instructions Thank to you. the two disciples that uh -huh. they should look for a donkey that's tied up. Uh -huh. Is there anybody on this line today who can say either before or even right now, I've had some situations that had me tied up. up. Woo! My God. My God. I couldn't fend for myself. My God. I couldn't do for myself. Uh-huh. You make it a point. I Pastor. didn't know if I was going left or if I was going right. Yeah. Because God. my life, my situation, my personal predicament had me tied up. Tied up. My God. My God. Bethage is an unknown, inconsequential place. Mm -hmm. Where the donkey finds himself tied up. My God. Some of us are in some tied up situations mm -hmm. right now. My God. And just like the donkey, God seems to call you when you are tied uh, uh, up. Woo! Jesus. Woo, my God. God seems to call you on days when you don't even feel like being bothered. Come on, Pastor. You God can't... seems to call you yes. when, when, when you basically turn the ringer off. On your phone. Yes, God, my God. He calls us at the very moment come when on, we are Pastor. everything but free. Woo, come on. <laughs> We're tangled up in some stuff. Jesus. We're oh, wrapped Jesus. up in some foolishness. Jesus. We're trying to come out of something that we got no business ever being in in the first place. Come on, come on, make it plain. Yes, yes. We're going through some rough times. Jesus. Our mobility has been limited. Jesus, come on, Pastor. We've been partially restrained. Uh huh. Uh huh. A place where you feel like you're stuck like Chuck. Uh huh. Straight out of luck. Straight out of luck. And My down. God. My God. You're not out, but you're down. But you're down. Almost out. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Your dreams are going down. My God. You're losing hope in all of the stuff that used to give you joy. Jesus. The thing that used to make you wake up in the morning, uh -huh. now all of a sudden, I'm just happy to be here. Yes. And here comes God, uh -huh. having need of you, uh -huh. giving you an idea to go minister to somebody, giving you an idea to tell somebody Jesus loves you. Uh -huh. Giving you an idea. To want to do something in your church ministry now. Yeah. Giving you an idea to want to be useful for the Lord. Yes, God. Giving you an idea to give a hug to somebody who don't even have any other way of getting a hug unless it comes from you. Yeah. Giving you an idea to smile at somebody who needs to see some happiness and some joy today. Come on, Pastor. Yes. He can see what we cannot see. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. God knows the struggle that yes. you're going through right now. He knows the pain that you're feeling Come on, right Pastor. now. He knows the problems that keep you up at night yes. cause you to cry oh, tears hallelujah. on your pillow. Yes. He knows the stuff that you won't tell anybody about that's bothering you profusely. Come on, Pastor. 
He calls us as a sign that we're not supposed to stay tied up. Come on, yes. He works through the human agency of relationships. And he always catches us at a time where we're tied up because when he brings us out, he doesn't want anybody else to get any credit. Somebody yeah. can testify right now that when you were down and almost out, it was another person, uh -huh. somebody else who helped you get back on track. Come on, that's good. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. That's because he have need of you. Yeah. And he lets his Holy Ghost come in and sit on you. Yeah. You Hallelujah. see, that's why Jesus had to come in riding on a donkey. Uh-huh. If you notice in the next image that I'm going to present, the good news here is when we can't come to him, uh -huh. he comes looking for us. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Jesus has to sit on your situation. Jesus. Come on, Pastor. Isaiah 61 and 1 says it like this. Heaven's my throne. This is the message Bible. Uh-huh. Earth is my footstool. Yes, yes. What sort of house could you build for me? Uh-huh. What holiday spot reserved for me? Mm. I made all of this. Come on, come on. I own all this. Yes. This is God decreeing to us. Uh-huh. That he is everything that we need. Everything. When God has need of you, uh -huh. your job is just to simply say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are a how-to ministry. Thank you. Jesus. I want to give you a couple of points that I believe that will live beyond me. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray that someone has received something that causes them to be inspired today. Yes. Something that causes you to be resurrected down in your spirit today. Yes. Amen. Amen. Four things I want you to remember for this message today. Yes. Number one, we must die to ourselves. Before we can live for God. Yeah. Number two, we must realize that every struggle in your life has a date of expiration. Yeah. So don't make a temporary decision. Don't make a permanent decision based on a temporary situation. Yeah. Number three, the Lord can still use you if you want to be used. Woo! Yes. Yes. That that's so good. <laughs> Woo! Oh, Lord. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good, too. To it, good stuff right there. <laughs> and finally, number four, faith is believing in God and trusting in God with a calculated action. Ooh, oh and I God. think all of it is so good, I have to say, I can drink to that. All right. Plus, Ooh, I'm thirsty. Good, good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I said all of that because I wanted to get you to a place where I could ask you one question. Yeah. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? For the Bible says in Romans chapter number 10, verse number 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And number verse number 10 puts the ice on the cake because it says, with the heart man believing into righteousness and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. I want you to repeat this simple little prayer for me today, with me today because it's for three different people. Number one, those who say, I've never been saved. Uh -huh. I've never given my life to the Lord. The second one is those who say, I used to be saved. And then the third is third type of person I'm looking for today is those who say, child, please, I just don't know. <laughs> you, you, you have no clue. <laughs> but guess what? You can do this. Amen? Amen. Now, it only takes a few seconds to get saved, but it's going to take the rest of your life yeah. to walk it out. Walk it out, walk it out. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody repeat this simple little prayer with me. Father in heaven. Father in heaven. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus died for me. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. And I now invite Jesus into my heart. I now invite Jesus into my heart. Right now. Right now. I am saved. I am saved. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that simple little prayer with me then your name is written in the book of life. Amen? Amen. You are now back into the perfect will and realignment of the, of, of our Father in heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And, and you're on a different trajectory of life. Now, we want to be your pastor and first lady. Amen? Amen. We want to minister to you. Amen? Amen. We don't want to just let you oh, get saved and fall by the wayside. So go to our website, www.savedandserving.org. 
and underneath the salvation video you'll see something that says submit feedback here click on it let us know you got saved today we're going to bring you into the fold and we're yes. going to minister you to yes. you yes. Hallelujah. let me Hallelujah. say that again go where it says there's a salvation video on our website www.savedandserving.org underneath that it says submit feedback submit your feedback here yeah or submit the feed click this feedback button whatever it says let us know you got saved fill out that form we will not allow you to fall by the wayside not as long as i got some breath in my body amen hallelujah hallelujah i know people go to most churches and you'll never hear from them again you don't hear from us every week yeah all you got to do is put your cell number in there and yes. an email yes yes hallelujah. god can use you if you want to be used yes. Ooh. Giving is worship, amen. Amen. And there's multiple ways that you can give to this particular ministry. Remembering that your financial gifts will empower us to defray the cost of ministry, amen. Amen. And with that being said, it's time to give. Amen. Let us, hallelujah. Let, hallelujah. Let us understand that we cannot buy a blessing from the Lord, amen. 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 But you want to give to prove your obedience to the Lord. Yes. There's multiple ways you can give. Cash app, cash tag, which is the dollar sign STS Ministries. You can go to our website, select online giving uh, at savedandserving.org. And you can also go to our PayPal account, paypal.me forward slash STSM. And you can also give there. And then for people who say, well, I need a paper trail. I need to be able to keep up with my stuff. You know, I can't rely on you guys to do it for me. Well, we got something for you too. Well, there it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Good checks, no rubber stuff. <laughs> Cashier's money orders and all this other stuff made payable to save to serve ministries. Post office box 86835, Portland, Oregon, 97286. We're going to leave it there just for a few more seconds so that you can get a hand, get your handle on it. Luke 6 and 38 shows us all of the different ways that we can receive it back because this is a guaranteed harvest. If you give to the things of God or give to the kingdom of God, you can't be God given. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If Hallelujah. you sow bountifully, then you're also going to reap bountifully. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's how God will cause you to receive your harvest back. It can come back in the form of healing in your body, deliverance from an addiction, breakthrough in your condition, brand new job, contract, or business, financial stability, promotions on your job, raises on your job. Restored relationships that were previously broken. There's so many different ways. Recovery from a broken heart. Reconciliation of a marriage, etc., etc. Hallelujah. And we want to thank everyone for your past, your present, and your future giving into this ministry. Amen.